Good morning. So we made it to Escalona yesterday, a pretty epic ride uh, through the Tunnel de Bielsa, which is a pretty long um, single track tunnel. And it spits you out into Spain and everything changes and the, uh, the mountains of the Pyrenees, most amazing views. So I made an early start this morning uh, from, uh, from the hotel I was uh, staying at. And I'm now heading up um, a gorge towards Savise. Uh, absolutely nobody on it. And I'll just pan around. So there we are. It's a pretty narrow track. I will say there's nobody on it this time of day and it is the most amazing uh, road you would want. And uh, somehow it's gonna take me up through that narrow gap and spit me out at uh, Servise. And there's a particularly fine gorge up there, uh, which I've promised my son I'll go and see. And here's Gigi, didn't miss a beat all the way here. Uh, and very clearly she was bedding down and becoming quieter and smoother. Now she's had her uh, first oil change, got the detergent oil uh, out of it. Um, like I said before, I could wish that the uh, front brake had more bite to it. It's certainly pretty spongy. And uh, there's a few times yesterday when I could have done with a bit more, uh, bit more stopping power. Uh, one of the most notable things about the trip was this uh, short windscreen here which you would think wouldn't do a great deal, but quite clearly the designers have used a wind tunnel uh, for it. Uh, these shoulders here are enough to kick the wind uh, beyond my arms and shoulders. And somehow this, uh, this screen puts the wind just over the top of my helmet. Uh, I'm five foot 10, I suspect if you're six foot or more, uh, it might hit you, but for me, it's absolutely fine. I compare it to the much bigger screen I had on my uh, previous bike, Triumph Trophy 900, uh, and I got a lot more buffeting on that than I do from this tiny little screen. So that's pretty, pretty remarkable. Uh, other than that, um, occasionally uh, I feel the need, it would have been good to have a sixth gear. Most of the time not, it's got plenty of torque. You can go down pretty slow in fifth if you, uh, if you want to, uh, without any great, uh, great hassle. Um, Okay, that's it for this first bit, and we'll have a look at the gorge once we get further up here today. But this is the first week of October. The weather's beautiful, uh, it's plenty warm enough, the roads are dry, and there's no bugger about. So, happy days. So the first night was spent at the Hotel Arnal in Escalona which had magnificent views over to the east, to the, the high mountains. The dinner that night was pretty amazing. Asparagus and smoked salmon, uh, followed by uh, pork fillets and a sort of donkey dick thing. And a very wobbly creme caramel, and all washed down with a full bottle of the local red wine, and all for 16 euros. So we've just popped out of the mountains at Biescas. And this is the main drag from Spain up into France. Uh, hardly a busy road. And you can see we're still surrounded by the Pyrenees and the peaks here. Um, it makes the Lake District look a bit small. It's quite, uh, it's quite surprising uh, how magnificent it is. Although when we came through Biescas and you can see that house in the distance there, uh, the houses are actually surprisingly similar uh, to the stone houses, slate roofs in, uh, in the Lake District. It's just all on a bit of a grander scale. And you can see the, the tree foliage is all just starting to take on its autumn colors. So Gigi and I are about to head up into France, then hang a right and head across um, mostly east towards Lord, um, where we're going to be staying tonight. And we'll go and have a look at uh, what the fuss is all about for the Catholics tomorrow. So I was just cruising along, uh, coming down the hill from the uh, Spanish French border, I'm around the corner, and there's a gaggle of very large, almost uh, 
heavy horses just standing beside the road. Uh, the rest of the, the flock are down by the river there. Beautiful horses, absolutely beautiful, in, uh, in really good condition. But uh, I'll almost stay that way, just standing there on the road. There's been some cars come through and um, they haven't got much time after the corner there to, to see them, particularly as they're in the, in the shade. Anyway, I wish them well. Okay, so we've just arrived back home after a round trip to the Pyrenees of some 760 odd kilometers. Um, I feel fairly, uh, fairly tired after that, um, but then you know, I'm not as young as I was. Um, so let's have a look at the bike and uh, just discuss uh, what was good and perhaps not so good. So here's Gigi, tired and happy, I like to think, and just working through it front to rear. Uh, the brakes have already spoken about. Um, I'm hoping to improve their performance uh, with some centered pads perhaps, uh, but I don't think they're ever gonna be brilliant, but it'd be nice to improve on what they are. The tires, the Seat tires are adequate. They were okay on the road. Um, anytime I went on anything loose, gravel, uh, they were skittish and bounced all over the place. So um, they will begin replaced uh, by the uh, Avon Trailmasters, as I mentioned before. Looking at the, uh, the cockpit area, the tripper is fine for a, uh, a short trip, but the lack of information on it uh, for a longer trip, you're always thinking, you know, where the hell am I in, the, in relation to the rest of the country? Um, and where's fuel, that kind of thing. So it's, it has its limitations, but it's, it's okay for short trips. The mount of the Q mount on the bar, um, the angle of it, as I mentioned before, it, it just won't go low enough in that, in that fit to the uh, mirror mount. And uh, I was having all sorts of problems with glare. So the only solution is to fit the, the bracket up inside the screen there which uh, secures, uh, the one I'm gonna get anyway, secures behind the, the instrument console there. Uh, and I've already tried it with the phone there and the, the angle uh, is much improved. Um, the power takeoff on the bars uh, was worth its weight in gold. Uh, very, very useful. Uh, and you can see, because it's open there, the takeoff for the 12 volt, uh, which I'd use for the compressor although I had no need for that happily. The fuel, I took on a couple of tanks of fuel. The fuel economy is pretty impressive, um, around the 70 mile to the gallon mark, uh, and you can't argue with that at all. My bodged up strap-on seat was supremely comfortable, I have to say, uh, and it looks pretty crap, otherwise I'd, I'd leave it there, because it was certainly, uh, I didn't have a, uh, a sore rear uh, after all the mileage that, that I did, but I will be getting the um, the gel saddle um, on there. I'll also be putting I'll also be putting the uh, cover on the uh, rear master cylinder here in the uh, main reservoir. Um, my heel was beginning to to chafe uh, on the uh, cylinder, master cylinder there, um, so it definitely needs it. As for the gearbox itself. Um, I thought it was really slick and sweet. Um, up and down the box, no, no problem at all. However, when it's hot, um, it is reluctant to select neutral from first. Uh, it just really you just can't find it. So I found the easiest way when you came up to a halt was just to nudge it down into neutral from second as you come to a halt, uh, which worked perfectly well. Uh, and particularly if you're having to wait in some of the uh, uh, traffic lights for road work that kind of thing in France they go on for ages uh, or just stick it in first and hold it there but it's only going to be uh, a short stop but the gearbox itself um, is is really well designed uh, and the ratios are, are, are good and by and large the fifth gear uh, is all you need in top unless you're on a really long straight straight road uh, that about wraps it up for for now uh, for this first trip which was really intended to be a shakedown cruise uh, for the bike to iron out the, the wrinkles and I'll be planning something a bit longer perhaps and a bit more enterprising uh, for the near future. 
So I'll keep you posted. Okay, that's it for now.